As we gather to worship our Lord, let us begin with a word of prayer. O oh God, by your power may we, with all the saints, comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with your fullness. Amen. Join me in the call to worship. Let us worship God, our light and our salvation. We desire to live in God's house and to seek God in his holy temple. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 35, printed in your bulletin, Near to the Heart of God. Our responsive reading this morning is familiar, Psalm 23. Let us read responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 
Trusting in God's faithfulness and compassion, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Make us a heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence, or make your Holy Spirit your joy of your salvation, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy. words of assurance from the Apostle John. This is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. And this is God's gospel promise, to grant us forgiveness of sins and eternal life by grace because of Christ's one sacrifice accomplished on the cross. Thanks be to God. Amen. come together to affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is number 69, printed in your bulletin, Standing on the Promises. And I would remind you that if you choose to sing, please put your mask on.
As we prepare to listen to the Word of God, pray with me for illumination. Guide us, O God, by your Word and Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning. I made a typo, <laughs> um, is the Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 through 9, and Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 19. Hear the word of the Lord. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old faithful and sure, for you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our Lord. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And the second reading from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly 
then now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what I have is little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, and of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. You Philippians indeed know that in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs more than once. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that accumulates in your account. I have been paid in full and have more than enough. I am fully satisfied now that I have received from Epaphrodites the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God, and my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Thus ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Oh Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I was preparing for this series of sermons on Philippians, I listened to a commentary that began by saying that the letter to the Philippians was filled with coffee cup verses meaning scripture verses that have become so popular and often quoted that they have been commercialized and put on merchandise like coffee cups and t-shirts, throw pillows and wall hangings. I looked up some of the coffee cup versions taken from Philippians that are for sale. I found many from the first chapter to the fourth, like I thank God every time I remember you. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. Rejoice in the Lord. Do not be anxious about anything. Pray always. The peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And perhaps the most popular Bob just read, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. At first I was taken aback by this blatant commercialization of God's holy word. But then I thought, this may be the only scripture people read. Words printed on someone's t-shirt or coffee cup. I also thought, what better way to start the day than holding a nice warm mug with an uplifting message as our mind awakens to the world. Rejoice might not be the first word that comes to mind if you wake up with your back aching and your joints so stiff that just sweeping away the cobwebs from a fitful night's sleep is the most you can muster. Maybe you tossed and turned all night with worry about an upcoming test or an interview an appointment or a treatment that you've been dreading, or for a loved one facing challenges that legitimately cause concern. To not be anxious about anything can be difficult some days. If your household is anything like ours, not long after we make 
we make our way to the breakfast table, the television is turned on to a morning news show. And if you didn't feel like rejoicing when you opened your eyes, then you probably feel less like doing so after turning on the morning news and listening to reports of the pandemic, rioting and shootings in major cities, devastation caused by severe weather and wildfires, political debates and negative campaign ads that fill the airwaves. How can we possibly rejoice in the face of such personal and communal sufferings? That question is surely as old as time itself. Imagine the suffering of Adam and Eve when one of their sons killed the other. Imagine the suffering of the Hebrews as they were held captive as slaves in Egypt. How Naomi must have suffered when her husband and sons died and she was in a strange land living among pagans. Or how Job suffered having lost everything and everyone he loved most dearly. How could any of God's people rejoice in the circumstances of their lives? The reading from Isaiah today gives us an example of rejoicing when it seems the last thing we might be inclined to do. One commentary I read on the text gave Isaiah chapter 25 the title, The Song of Joy from the Midst of Tribulation. Isaiah provides an excellent guide for us in remembering to praise God at all times. A reminder that we can experience joy even as we are smack in the middle of the most difficult situation of our life, even as we think our government is on the brink of collapse because of the dissension, even as we face turmoil in our family or at work, even as we witness violence and injustice in our society. In the 24th chapter, Isaiah speaks of the judgment to come upon the world, especially in the end times, the great tribulation, when God's righteous judgment will reign in heaven and earth. The first verse of chapter 24 reads, Now the Lord is about to lay waste the earth and make it desolate, and he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. The verses go on to describe what will happen and why. The earth lies polluted under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. And yet, chapter 25 begins with a hymn of praise. How can that be? Isaiah knew that our God is just and always acts through righteousness, being fair and unbiased in all actions. O oh Lord, he says, you are my God. Knowing that the Lord, our creator God, the God of Abraham, the God revealed in and by Jesus Christ, God who is completely impartial and free of all prejudice, is our God, and he makes us want to praise him. Isaiah says, I will exalt you. I will praise your name. It is a choice he made. I will exalt you. It is a choice we make. Worship is never to be just a feeling, even if it is an intense feeling. We are to worship God with decision. Like Isaiah, when we think about all the wonderful things God has done, it is pretty easy to make the decision to worship the Almighty, even in spite of our circumstances. The text from Isaiah goes on to praise God for his goodness to the weak and weary. For you have been a strength to the poor, to the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade, in the heat. Our praise is to be filled with thought and with remembrance of God's great works. 
both throughout the history of humankind and in our own lives. And for the grace and mercy God will show in the future, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, Isaiah says, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. This is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. God might seem distant or cruel when he compels us to wait on him, but his ways really are the best, and someday we will see that. Until then, we are left with the choice to turn away from God, ignoring the promises of Holy Scripture and the things we know to be true through our faith, that our God is right, righteous and merciful. Or we can choose to rejoice, remembering that God came to earth to be born in human flesh and to suffer and die for our salvation. We can choose to joyfully praise our God for being with us always, in sickness and in health, in times of happiness and times of sorrow, in prosperity and in poverty. The Apostle Paul, as a Jewish scholar, surely knew the writings of the prophets and knew the examples of joyful praise from Isaiah and from the Psalms. Paul knew how to praise God in all circumstances, and he shared that knowledge with the members of the church he helped to build in Philippi, and as he wrote to the growing congregation, even during his imprisonment. In the first three chapters of the epistle, we have seen how he encouraged his friends to hold fast to their faith in God, to support each other in living lives worthy of the example set by him through Jesus, and to build each other up with humility and with the highest regard for each other. In the fourth chapter, Paul encourages them to be joyful in their worship, to praise God always, to rejoice with each other, even in the midst of their challenges and trials. When they had cause for worry, personally or communally, Paul encourages them not to be anxious for anything. But how do we do that? Paul says we achieve the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, by praying and asking God to take the worry from us. Being thankful for all God has already done for us, and for the sure knowledge that God will continue to be faithful and just to God's people, no matter what the worldly circumstance of the present time. About 70 years ago, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale wrote a bestseller entitled, The Power of Positive Thinking. Peale was a minister in the Reformed denomination, and as such, I am certain he knew scripture, chapter and verse. My guess is that his theory of positive thinking was based on the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Paul encouraged them to focus on whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. In the oldest confession of the Reformed Church, the Belgic Confession, we affirm the sufficiency of Scripture, meaning that Holy Scripture contains the will of God completely, and that everything one must believe to be saved is sufficiently taught in Scripture. We can read books by men like Dr. Peel and learn something, I suppose, though I cannot say I remember ever reading the book. But I do know with certainty that the Holy Spirit led Paul to instruct us on how to be not to be anxious in anything, and that is through prayer and petition, and how important it is to have an attitude of gratitude, as a popular movement today tells us to do, giving thanks in all things. 
And from God's word, I know that, the, that our thoughts should focus on whatever is true, honorable, and just, whatever is pure, pleasing, and commendable. Anything excellent or praiseworthy is what deserves our attention. In his letter to the Romans, Paul instructed his readers, do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and pleasing to him, and is perfect. Even when the standards of this world are good and ethical and not opposed to scripture, they are not able to transform us inwardly so that we know the will of God. Through scripture, God changes our minds so that we know what is pleasing and good and in accordance to God's plan, even if we don't understand that plan at the moment. Praising God is right and admirable, no matter the current state of our personal life or the turmoil in our society. Rejoicing together is commendable and pleasing to God. And so I share Paul's message. Rejoice in the Lord always. When you awake in the middle of the night, turn your thoughts to what is pleasing. As you open your eyes in the morning, take a moment to pray, presenting your requests to God and offering thanksgiving for all that is noble and right. And again I say, rejoice. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for the insight that you grant us through scripture. We thank you that you speak to us, that you change our very minds so that we know your will and that we patiently wait for it to be completed in us. Lord, in our human failings, sometimes we cannot help but worry. Lord, help us to focus on what is pleasing and good. Help us to follow the words of scripture, first, foremost, and as the end to all knowledge that is necessary for our lives. Lord, we praise you and rejoice together in your holy name. Amen. As we have given our gifts in the offering plate at the back of the sanctuary, let us pray for God's blessing on these gifts. Generous God, you have given us life, a place to live, and a community of people to live with. Open our eyes to each other and to all our brothers and sisters, especially the poor, the oppressed, and the alienated. Make us humble enough to help and comfort them so that your love and justice and peace may come to them. We make bold to consecrate ourselves and our gifts to you and to the service of others through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, O creatures here below. the Apostle Paul says, through prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Let us do so. Lord, we praise you for your presence here among us today. We praise you for our, your presence in our life each day. We praise you for the gift of your holy word. And we praise you for this church, Lord, where we can gather together to worship you. 
Lord, we pray earnestly for the congregation at Anesquithor. We pray that you help us to see the way into the future, that we might spread your word more fully. Help us, Lord, to gather souls for your glory. Help us to go into our community and share what you have given us, the joy that we feel in knowing our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the whole church on earth, that those are, that are persecuted and cannot worship freely are still able to worship you. Keep them safe, Lord, with a hedge of protection as they gather together to glorify your name. Lord, we give you thanks for blessings that you give us here on earth. In the midst of our trials, we thank you for the special blessing of doctors and nurses and other health care givers. Those that meet the needs of their patients and give them peace and hope as they battle illnesses that are devastating to their bodies, to their minds, to their families. Lord, we pray for those that are facing physical disease like cancer. We think especially of Danya and Rodney and Judy and so many others that have recently been diagnosed and face such trials in the weeks and months to come. We add Ethie, Lord, in her illness and also in her praise, Lord, that you have and continue to meet all of her needs on this journey. Lord, we pray for those that have experienced grief, that have battled diseases like Alzheimer's as well as cancer, for those that suffer with addiction, for those that are under the grip of mental illness. Lord, for all of those that suffer in ways that Maybe some of us know and others can't imagine, Lord. We pray that your peace and strength meet them right where they are each morning as they awake. Lord, give them your hope for a new day. Lord, for all of those that suffer with a pain that is deep, help them to wait for an answer to your will. Help them to be faithful to you in their waiting, knowing that someday, Lord, they will see you face to face and that we will all know the plans that you had to help us prosper on this earth. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray that you quell the dissension that you work all things to your good. We pray that you enter the minds of all of the leaders at all levels of government, Lord, that they might do your will to serve the people in this country. And we pray, Lord, for global leaders that they might do the same for the people in their countries, Lord. Lord, we pray for our children and teachers, for the stressful times that they experience, along with all others that work in our education system. Help them, Lord, to struggle through, knowing that in you each day is born anew, and that with you by our side, we truly can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, you sent Christ to this earth, and for this we give you our most glorious, joyful praise. Lord, we are so thankful for the salvation that you have given us in Christ. 
and for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit that he left with us to give us comfort until we see you. Lord, we now pray together in the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 56. In your bulletin, God will take care of you. hear the benediction. May our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who came with grace and truth, also fill your hearts with grace and truth as you serve him in the days ahead. And may the joy of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be your strength. Amen. <laughs>